Good morning. What are you doing? Crystal Whirling. Oh, I'm just getting a dip before I uh, get into the paperwork for the day. Mm. You? Any, any, any word on Holden? No. No, we expect to hear from him today, though, however. Are you going to go swimming? Yeah, you want to race me to the diving no, board? No, I need coffee. All right, excuse mm. me. I, I saw the lights on and saw your car in the driveway as I was going home. What are you doing here? I, I just knew Mom and Dad were out of town and I kind of wanted to be by myself for a while, that's all. At least he told me Daryl's looking for you. Why, why is he looking for you? Uh, Andy, don't answer that, please. It could be Daryl. So? Why wouldn't you want to talk to Daryl? Freddie, what's going on? Andy, you got a phone call. Oh, thank you, buddy. Hello. Andy, it's, it's Daryl. Daryl, I, I did get your message. Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't had a chance to call you back. Look, it's no problem. Look, uh, I gotta, I gotta ask you a question. This might sound kind of strange, but, uh, do you know where Franny is? I thought maybe you'd heard from her or something. Uh, it's no problem. It's, we just... Well, we had one of those misunderstandings, you know. I'll probably be hearing from her pretty soon. In the meantime, if you do hear from her, would you give me a call? Great. Thanks. Bye. I want to apologize about last night. I was just in a rotten mood. Yeah, I noticed. I thought that you needed a good night's rest. That's, that's why I slept in Carrie's nursery. Well, uh... I missed you. And it just wasn't the same waking up without you this morning. Why don't we just, I don't know, let's pretend that last night never happened and I just got back from Switzerland and, and I'm just saying hello to you. Gosh, I have missed you so much. Hello. Hi, Daryl. It's Kim. I hope I didn't wake you up. No, 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 not at all. Listen, uh, Bob is about to drive back to town, but we wanted to run something past you and Franny first. Well, uh, she's not really here right well, now. Well, it's okay. I mean, if she's busy or whatever, I just ask her and then you could let us know. Uh, the thing is, we just realized that tomorrow is your anniversary, and we were thinking that it might be fun to have the whole family over for a little family gathering in the backyard, right where you were married. Be a lot of happy memories for all of us. It gives me a very strange feeling even holding this letter. I mean, why would he write to me, and why would he send it to you at the hospital? Honey, I don't know. today by Pepto-Bismol. The one that coats is the only one you'll need. Woo! Yeah! All right. You going in? No, I don't want to go in. Worried about home, huh? Yeah. I'm real worried about Holden. I think something happened. Otherwise, he would have called Lily, and I don't understand it. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't I call Mac, see what the police can do? How's that sound? I think that's have a good I idea. I've got interesting news for you. Ooh. It's just Walsh stuff. Oh, good. I love to get in my husband's business. She sure does. Not a word to her. I have to make a phone call. I'll be right back. Okay. Holden's not back. What? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is Andy in his office? Uh, Andy has brought the office outside today. Hello, Andy. Hello. I just wanted to let you know that I'm working the lunch shift and then I'm going over to the Earl Mitchell Center, but that I'll be back for dinner. Okay, good. Yeah, no problem. 
Well, I thought I'd go and swim if that's okay with you. Sure, why wouldn't it be? Well, I wouldn't want you and Kirk calling me on the carpet for punching in late. Well, I hope he can stay afloat with that big chip on his shoulder. <laughs> okay, I called Mac. He's going to see what he can do, and he's going to call me when he finds out anything, all, all right? right? Great. What's going on with Scott? He called me today. He is in New York. New York? What happened in Boston? I don't know. He didn't tell me. Oh, he did try to call Julie Wendell, though, today for lunch. Wait, wait, wait. How does he know Julie? Oh, he met her last time he was in Oakdale, and Lisa suggested that he call her for lunch since he doesn't know anybody in New York. But apparently, the guy who answered the phone said she was too busy for work to meet with them. She was busy with Ron Gillette. All right, I gotta go get cleaned up. You guys can talk shop. All right. So, did you, uh, did you have a good time last night? After so? Yeah. What'd you do? Yeah, well, we went over to the Snyder Pond. Evan and Emily and I. Oh, yeah? Snyder Pond. Been there once this summer. Too many memories, I guess. Julie? No, not Julie. At the times you and I were there. Well, has uh, Daryl told Franny? I don't know. After I talked to you last night, he called home again, and she still hadn't returned. He had some kind of message, though, when he hurried off, and I haven't talked to him since. I can only th suppose that by now he has talked to her and told her the truth about Jennifer. Well, honey, I hope for everyone's sake that he has. Now, you and Franny have a strong relationship. I am sure you will get past this. Maybe. I just hope that Daryl and Franny can. Hal called me last night. Oh, did he? He's okay. He said he's going to call me as soon as we can be together again. That's wonderful. Right, wonderful. Open up. What should I do with that stuff in the camera? <laughs> I have no I'll idea. I'll take care of it. Right. Oh, okay. And Barbara, I'm sorry if I upset you last night. I just, I don't know what's going on with you and Daryl. You know, first you say that you don't want to talk to him, and now you... Look, what is... Look, look, Tess, I told you last night I'd just like to forget about it, okay? Okay. Okay. Fashion's Tess Shelby. Uh, just a moment, please. It's it's Daryl. Do you want to talk to him? Thank you. Daryl, have you talked to Franny? No, she didn't come home last night. I have no idea where she is. What? Well, well have you called anyone? Maybe she went up to Bob and Kim's cabin after you talked to them. No, Kim called this morning. She's obviously not there. Andy hasn't heard from her either. I, I drove by Ellen's last night, and I saw Emily in the driveway. I even asked her if she'd seen Franny. It must seem pretty strange me asking her that kind of question. Damn it, this is all because of that letter Gavin sent to her. God only knows what he wrote in it. Well, when she gets back, you'd better find out. Well, I will, but I'm not just going to sit around here and wait. I'm going to fly up to that prison today and see Kruger for myself, ask him what the hell he wrote in that letter. I know my letter must have come as a great shock to you, but I... I felt as a friend that I had to warn you because the truth about your husband will eventually come out. Look, Gavin, I know that you didn't write the letter out of any concern for me, and I don't believe any of the accusations that you've made against Daryl. Then why are you here? Because I wanted to know if you had even the slightest proof of what you've accused him of. Now, if I did, I wouldn't be here. I would still be running Kruger Industries, and you'd be visiting Daryl here now. But right now, I have someone conducting an investigation that will eventually clear me. Who? Well, I can't tell you that right now. I don't believe you. But you're still wondering, or else you wouldn't be here. Now, as I wrote to you, I am convinced that Daryl has already destroyed Carolyn's no, journal. No, you are the one who destroyed Carolyn's journal. That came out in court. That was a lie concocted by Arthur Claiborne and your husband. But listen to me. Whatever you choose to believe, I am convinced that Carolyn must have written something else, perhaps letters, something that proves she realized the truth before she died. That Daryl married her for her money and that she was the only thing standing in the way between him and the DeWitt fortune and you. You're lying. You're lying. That is a lie. I should have never come here. Uh. The fish are biting. Oh, what a bummer. Well, go 
put your swimming gear on, and as soon as Dad leaves, we'll go swimming. Okay, pal? Okay. <laughs> Wish I could stay up here till you two come oh, down. Honey, me too. I can't believe how quickly this week has gone. Did Daryl call back? Nope, nope. He sounded kind of, I don't know, confused when I asked him about the family party, so I don't know. Well, maybe he and Franny would like to spend their first anniversary alone all by themselves. Could be, could be. Well, I gotta get changed. I gotta be at the hospital by noon. No, no, no. I, I want to talk to you about something first. I just was on the phone with Jeff. Mm -hmm. He wants me to fly to Barcelona for the Olympics. Isn't that a great idea? I could do some human interest stories about the athletes and their families, and then we could run it on the, on the local news and on patterns. And there's no reason in the world I couldn't take Chris with me. So, what do you think? I think you should jump at the chance. Oh. I think it'd be wonderful for you and for Chris. I just oh. wish I could go with you. Honey, I wish you could. To any chance you could get the time off? No, uh, no, I'm afraid my front row seat for the Olympics will be in front of the television set. But I think it's terrific for you, too, and it's something that he will never forget. Yeah, I know. But... What? I miss you already. Oh, sweet. Are you all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I just have a lot on my mind, and I was, I was kind of hoping to, to talk to somebody I could trust, like Margot and, and Tom, but they're on vacation, and like you said, Dad, on his way up to the cabin, so... I used uh, to be a good listener. That, that's real sweet of you, Larry, but, um, you're really the last person I could talk to about the... I'm sorry, I'm not making any sense. Oh, Hey! I thought you had an appointment. Uh, I did. My first appointment was a no-show. Well, I guess you're losing your touch with the diaper crowd, McDermott. Actually, it was Carrie Crawford. Franny was supposed to bring her in for a checkup. I called over, and uh, the maid said that uh, the baby was still there, but Franny and Daryl were out. I don't know. Maybe it just slipped her mind or something. Hmm. <laughs> What's so funny? You're losing your uh, stethoscope? No, it's that ring on your finger. Every time I see it, it makes me smile. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going right down to John Dixon's office and reporting you, too. I oh. thought you'd be at M&A by now. I'm on my way. Just have to talk to Graham about something. I meant to do it this morning, but I forgot. Hmm. I had kind of a late night last night. Mm. You and Andy? No. Andy dropped me off at Graham's, and Evan and Courtney invited me to go down to the Snyder Pond with them, and it was just late when we got back. So late that I was kind of surprised when Daryl stopped by. Daryl? What yeah. was he doing there? Uh, looking for Franny. He didn't really say why. I mean, whoever thought we'd oversell the AIDS benefit? Well, let's look on the bright side. We raised an enormous amount of money. Oh. I know that's true, but I really hate to have to turn people away at the door. How about this, if we find out how many tickets were sold as donations and how many people are really coming? I was just going to say that. Why don't we divide up the names this morning and call them? Great, great. Here. Good morning, everybody. Uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Oh, sure. Great. Excuse can me. Can I talk to you about something? Sure. Ellie wants to know if M&A can get another, another a table for the AIDS ball. Do you have room? <laughs> no. Erin, I missed you last night. I know, I know. I missed you, too, but I, I didn't want to leave Lily alone, even with Lucinda there. Oh, especially with Lucinda there. No, no, she's being very helpful. <laughs> she's hired a private detective to look for Holden. Mm. I called Mac to see if they'd had any reports of an accident or anything like that. Found out that Kirk had told him also. Anyway, Mac said if he hears anything, he'll check into it and let us know. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I want to call Julie. <laughs> what do you want to get her involved for? Well, I mean, if she find, calls to the farm and finds out that Holden isn't there, and then she'll call Lily, and who knows what she's going to say. Yeah, sure, I guess, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, well, why was Daryl... Why did Daryl show up to, to Ellen's in the middle of the night looking for Franny then? I don't know. What are you thinking? Uh, I, I just wondered if it had something to do with, with Franny missing her appointment. It's, it's, it's just not like her. It's ringing. Be careful what you say, okay? Hello, may I speak to Julie Wendell, please? Hi, Andy. Hi, 
right. I am taking Memorial's top volunteers to lunch. They have worked above and beyond the call of duty. <laughs> How is the AIDS benefit coming? A little too well, I'm afraid. We've oversold. Yeah. Yeah, we're busy calling everyone who's bought tickets and asking them if they really intend to come. How about a suggestion? We could have two parties, one with ballroom music and one with classic rock and roll. Hey, only if you organize it, Andy. Oh, no, I can't really. I'm too busy this summer. <laughs> so I hear. I understand that you're working with a photographer as well as working here. Yeah, he's quite famous, too, Dean Avey. Very impressive. Thank you. I saw the ad for the Yacht Club. I had no idea that Courtney was so photogenic. Yeah, she is. Yeah. You've beaten uh, the noon rush, so you can sit wherever you want. Oh, I was just telling Andy how photogenic you are. Oh, goodness, thank you. <laughs> Would you mind seating them? Uh, sure. Here's the menus. I want to talk to Ivan for a second. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. How about over here? He's four Sorry about that. Hi. Well, Ellie told me that Holden's not back yet. No, no, and I, I'm very worried about him. Julie called me yesterday. I didn't tell her that he was missing. But uh, I think we should tell her, because if she finds out some other way, and she calls Julie. I know, Julie. I know. I had the same thought, so I called her, and I talked to the maid, and the maid said that Julie and Ron went on vacation, and she had no idea when they'd be back. I was talking to Duncan when I was out at the center tutoring Kira. He tells me that they're going to be breaking ground for the uh, retirement center this summer. Yes, Ralph told me. I cannot tell you how relieved I'll be when that day finally arrives. It's been a long wait. I understand that uh, you're looking for an apartment. And have you thought about the retirement center? Oh, well, it'll be some time before you can actually move in, won't it? I mean, I mean I've imposed enough on Ellen already. Not at all. Very sweet. But actually, I saw a very interesting ad for the River House. I thought Evan and I might look into that. I understand they're very luxurious, but also very expensive. No, I, I know. But I think it would be a good investment for Evan. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. Oh, that iced tea looks good. I think I'll have some. Okay, I'll be right back. Hi. Barbara, are you here for lunch? Uh, no, no, I'm not, honey. I just stopped by to talk to you. You haven't spoken to Franny this morning, have you? No, I haven't. Barbara, what's going on with Daryl and Franny? I know there's something wrong. I think your days are pretty much the same in here. So what brings you here? I want to know what you wrote in that letter to my wife. Oh, yes, 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 the letter. Sorry I had to send it in care of her father. Hope it didn't raise too many embarrassing questions for you. But I really couldn't send it to the house, could I? Because if you saw it first, then uh, Franny wouldn't get to see it, would she? That's not true. So you're saying that you have no secrets from your wife? That's right. We trust each other completely. Oh, then why uh, didn't she tell you what was in the letter? Look, I know how much you're enjoying this. I know you get a sick pleasure out of hurting people. It was never more clear to me than that day in the courthouse when you told me about Jennifer. Oh, Daryl. You know by now that what I told you is the truth, that you do have a little daughter and Barbara didn't want you to know about it. So is that what you wrote to Franny? No. I assumed that you'd already had to tell her about that. I'm quite glad to hear you're still sweating that one out. Damn it, Kruger, what was in that letter? The truth. And you know exactly what truth I'm talking about. flew into the snowbank. I mean, they're okay, but luckily, yes. Well, I hope they took your advice and they stay in a motel. Yeah. I'm just uh, really worried about them. I'll tell you something that we're both worried about. The possibility that you might be spending the night here alone.
time? Honey, honey, what a terrific surprise. Yeah, Mom, I'm sorry. I would have called before I came, but, um... Uh, son, uh, why don't you go change your clothes? Go change your clothes, okay? Okay, but you better stay. Okay. Sweetie, what's oh. the matter, honey? We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns. In just a moment. And now, part two of As the World Turns. Okay, Jess, try to help me with this dress. Put it in this box so we can get it to Mrs. Lynch. She's going to pick it up in about a half an hour. Oh, what? Late night, huh? Yeah, I was at the pond with Hush. Oh, sounds awfully romantic to me. <laughs> it wasn't. Rosanna was there. She's oh. not at the Mitchell Center anymore. Emma invited her to stay over to live there, and she... Mm -hmm. She is, of course. You know, I can't believe I tried to help that girl out. I'm just too sweet for my own good sometimes. <laughs> well, we better well. be thankful she's not working here. I do know. I know. I'm... I guess I am. I don't know the poor child, but <laughs> I am very thankful that uh, Simone is here. She is very patient with the customers. Are you saying I'm impatient? Darling, I'm not saying that exactly, I, except that when you are the teeniest, tiniest bit impatient, then your enthusiasm more than makes up for it. Oh, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Well, I am impatient about one thing, and that's Hutch. You know, he keeps talking about not going to college in the fall. I hate that. I know, you've mentioned that before. Now, just what's going on with that boy? Well, he feels... He feels guilty that Link is paying his tuition because Link is paying all this divorce stuff, the lawyers and stuff, trying to get a divorce from Marcy. Well, it does seem to me that before Hutch makes up his mind, he ought to talk this over with Link. Yeah, but he won't. But somebody's got to, you know? You want to get... Fashions, Tess Shelby. Tess, is Daryl Crawford. Is Barbara there? Uh, no, she, she's at the factory. Oh, hold on a sec. It's Daryl. Do you want to speak to him? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Hey, Tess. Uh, help Simone. I know she needs some help. <clears throat> okay. Where are you? I'm on my jet flying back to Oakdale. Did you see Gavin? Yes, I did. But it was a wasted trip. And then we close with the shot of the healthy and hearty box with the waterfall in the background. Looks good to me. Yeah. I assume Candace okayed this. Not yet. Well, Vicki, you should take it to Candace before you bring it here. She's head of the commercial department. And she just loves to veto anything I come up with. That's why I wanted to get your reaction oh, first. No, 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 no. Don't put me in the middle of this. First you take it to Candace. If she approves it, then it should go to Daryl. And Daryl will do whatever Candace wants. He always does. Well, then have them both initial it, then bring it here. Whatever you say. Can you believe the egos in the DeWitt commercial department? I don't department? know why Daryl puts up with the two of them. Connor. I read your ideas on Space Age. I think they're terrific, assuming nice. they're cost-effective. Well, there's one way to find out. Do a cost analysis. Oh, what a tedious job. Look, I'll work on that with the accounting department if you want. No, no, no. Let Evan do it. You have more important things to deal with. Which reminds me, can you run by the Yacht Club before this afternoon's meeting? I've worked up some figures on Horton Pharmaceuticals. I called Andy. He'll have him by the pool. I have to call Ellie, but would you please tell your brother what you told me at the Yacht Club? Oh, he forgot to tell me to pick up his laundry. Evan, he's the CEO. You've got to expect that he's going right, to ask Right, right, right. What did he want you to tell me? Oh, well, last year when we took Walsh back from Lucinda, I get this call from a guy that I went to Harvard Business School with, Tony Loomis, congratulating me. Well, yesterday, I read in Business Trends that Tony was just made senior VP at Cabot Motors. So I called to congratulate him. And? And I get the distinct impression that Cabot is ready to switch management consultants. Cabot Motors. I'd like to wave that contract in front of Lucinda's face. So would I. Sorry, babe. There's no way I can get away for lunch today. Oh, that's okay, Kirkadoodle. We're really busy here, too. All right, I'll call you later. Yeah, we're swamped. Gotta go. Love ya. Bye. Hey, you know what I was thinking? Maybe we'd go to the Yacht Club and have lunch. Great, if you're not too busy. <laughs> I might be able to squeeze an hour in. Well, I already talked to my mom, so maybe she and Larry can come join us later. Oh, that would be very fun. Right. But I can't stay too long. I've got all this reading to do. Oh. No, don't pick it up. Let <sighs> Hannah do it. That's her job. Getting, we have a receptionist now. Yeah. I jump every time the phone rings. Oh, you know what? Why don't you just take your reading to the Yacht Club, and that way you won't be bothered. Oh, maybe I oh, will. Hey, Mike. Great. <sighs> 
Uh, Emily. Yeah. Hi, excuse me. I, I've got these uh, files on Green Acres Dairy. Oh, at last. An account I'm familiar with. I worked on Green Acres before I left for L.A. Well, you're lucky. I mean, when I started, all the accounts were completely new to me. I, uh, I came across your notations on there a lot, though. I'm really impressed with the work you did. Oh, well, I trained with Craig Montgomery, who started m a There's no one better. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I've heard. Well, I better get back to it, Mike. So, listen, uh... How about lunch? Maybe I can uh, bring you up to date on the files on these mm. accounts. Thanks, but I'm having lunch with Ellie today. Well, uh, how about dinner then? Ha <laughs> uh ha, -huh, I heard you were back. So where the trout? Afraid they weren't biting this oh, morning. Oh, a lame excuse, Bob. That's the only one I've got. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you calling? <gasps> I'm trying to call Sabrina. Sabrina? I want to find out about some of the kids down at the clinic. Especially Inez. You know, I, I, I just can't stop thinking about her. Pregnant, 14, no husband, no family. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about Inez, too. There's some uh, Kim coming back. Uh, tomorrow, but not for long. She may be covering the Olympics over in Barcelona for WOAK. Mm. And if she goes, she'll take Chris along. You're going to be banging around in that big house all by yourself, huh? Uh, but, you know, Emily may be taking the garage apartment, so I'll have a near neighbor. Remember when I rented the garage apartment? Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it, yeah. John. Never. I thought you'd want to know Susan's trying to reach Sabrina. Oh, I want to say hello if she gets through. Uh, Bob, mm -hmm. is Franny all right? Yeah, she's fine. Why? Well, she came in here looking for you the other day, and she seemed... tense. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Hi. No luck. I couldn't get through. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Emily called. She wants to know if we want to meet her for lunch. Um, you want to go? I've got some things I have to take care of. I'll let you know later. Hmm. You weren't by any chance talking about Fran, were you? Matter of fact, we were. Well, Larry was very concerned when uh, she didn't show up for Carrie's appointment this morning. Well, he didn't say anything about that. But he did seem concerned about it. Lisa, I apologize to you because I'm absolutely no help out there today. Oh, don't worry about it, Barbara. Things have slowed down a lot today. All right. Just keep hoping that Daryl will call and tell me that Franny is back and they've had a chance to talk. I know he was counting on Gavin telling him what was in that letter, but Gavin wouldn't say a thing to him. But I'm sure Daryl is right. Whatever Gavin wrote to Franny in that letter is the reason she's disappeared. Mrs. Lynch wants that dress. She's here. I'll yes. Take, okay, I'll take care of it. And Barbara, are you okay? I'm fine, Tess. Are you, are you worried about Uncle Hal? No. Not about your Uncle Hal. It just feels really strange, Mom, to have these kind of doubts about my husband. And I thought going to see Gavin in the jail would somehow put them to rest, but... Honey, when did this all start? It's been going on for a long time, Mom. Lots of little things that... Daryl always managed to explain away, yet they kept happening. A lot of it has to do with the ski lodge in Switzerland. He just came back from there? Well, that's just it. I mean, I don't even know if he ever went there at all. Daryl told me that he met with a real estate agent in Switzerland to show the ski lodge. He was going to have him show the lodge for him. I called that agent last night, Mom. He said he had never even seen Daryl. Well... Did you ask Daryl about it? I never got a chance to. When he got back from wherever he was, he was in such an awful mood, and... <sighs> Mother, it's not any one thing. It's, it's a whole pattern of things, things that just don't make sense. And Daryl, he's, he's, been, he's been strange and evasive towards me. And... <sighs> it's not like I didn't have doubts in my mind, as it was already, but after I read Gavin's letter... Oh, you did read it then. I thought you were going to throw it away. Well, I did. 
The night that you and Dad came by to bring me the letter, I got a phone call from Arthur Claiborne. He said he wanted to congratulate Daryl on Gavin's second conviction. I told him that I thought he should congratulate Tom, if anyone. And his response was, give Daryl the message and he would understand. Well, my mind just started going back over all the things that didn't make any sense to me. And I knew I had to read the letter. So what did it say? I want you to read it. When the circumstantial evidence against me started piling up, I told my attorney I was being set up by someone very clever and powerful. Now that I've had time to reflect, I've come to realize it couldn't have been just one person. There were two, Arthur Claiborne and your husband. Graham, I want to let you know there's a chance I might be moving into Kim and Bob's garage apartment if it becomes available. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Ellen, you must be so disappointed. Well, I love having Emily at home, but I guess I knew she'd eventually need a place yeah. of her own. How are things going down at m and Oh, I love being back, thanks. <laughs> Uh, Mike and Ted are real glad she's back, too. <laughs> <laughs> Will you ladies have a lovely lunch? I'll call you later. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm so surprised that Emily isn't married yet. She's so talented and attractive. She was dating someone out in Los Angeles, but eventually she found out he wasn't that interested in marriage. Oh, well, she'll find someone before long. <laughs> she's so attractive and bright. It doesn't no surprise coming from a family like yours. <laughs> Can I get you anything else? Oh, no, dear. Thank you. You've done wonderfully for us, but nothing for me. I think you can bring the check. Okay, I'll be right back. Hey, Court. Hey, you here to work on your tan? No such luck. I'm uh, running an errand for Kirk. Andy's got some papers for me to pick up. Your mom's here? Yeah. And there's Emily. I, uh, maybe I'll say hello. Uh, can I see something first? Uh, sure. This is a little bit awkward, but I've just learned that it's not good for me to hold in my feelings. Well, why don't you tell me what they are? Last summer, um, my problems kind of got out of hand because I felt second to Julie. Yeah? Well, I fell second to Emily last night. Are you serious? Yes. I just felt left out. You were ignoring me, and you were spending time with her, and you couldn't take your eyes off her. Courtney, I, I can't believe you're saying this. I mean, sure, Emily's fun and, and attractive and all of that, but the, the main reason I'm being friendly with her is I might want to work at m and I told you that. Don't you know? You can never be second best with me. I'm in love with you. Addie, I've seen the figures. You guys are a prime candidate for a hostile takeover, and I don't like the fact that Lucinda sent Scott Eldridge to Boston. When Lucinda knows a company's in trouble, she's like a shark smelling blood. No, that's exactly the problem. We don't have the cash to outbid her. Yeah, well, I'd like to know where she gets her capital, too. That's a good idea. Terrific. Okay, great. You keep me posted, will you? All right. Bye. Do you have a minute? Just about. Okay, well, I just wanted to say that I think that you are out of line asking Evan to go get those files for you. Well, I thought I was doing the kid a favor, sending him to the Yacht Club so he could see Courtney. Come on, Kirk, that's not why you did it. I mean, having him do a cost analysis is one thing, but having him go on a personal errand okay, because you forgot... Okay, point taken. Okay. But to tell you the truth, your brother is really... Yeah. Send her in. Candace. Oh. Candace! Good morning. Did, did Vicki show you uh, her work up with the storyboard? Oh, yes. What'd you think? W well, it needs some work. Um, but that's not why I wanted to speak with you. I may have to go out of town for a few days. Oh, this is bad timing. Daryl's really anxious to nail down this new campaign. Yeah, I know, but I... Oh, speak of the devil. Oh, I didn't know you were coming in today. I wasn't planning to. Why? Is there a problem? Uh, could I have a word with you in private? 
Sure, sure. Excuse me. What is it? You're not going to like hearing this. Well, sweetie, I mean, having read Gavin's letter, I can certainly see why you would be so upset. But I, why would you give any credence at all to what he says? I mean, he's a convicted murderer. Look what he put Barbara through. Yes, Mother, I know that. But what if he is innocent as he claims? What if he was set up? Thing that neither one of us wants to remember. But I guess maybe we should talk about it. What? Douglas Cummings. Mother. Honey. Let's think about it. Just think about it. Now, he was somebody that we both knew and trusted. We brought him into our home, into our family, and you fell in love with him. And sweetheart, it was just devastating. So frightening. When we found out how very sick he was, sweetheart, Franny, listen. We both carry scars from that, believe me. I'm just saying that what happened to you then, the betrayal of, oh, sweetheart, honey, girl, <laughs> just to have somebody totally deceive you, somebody that you loved and trusted. Now, that could be coloring your, your reactions now. I'm so sorry, but you know, from what I've seen, Daryl has been the most loving and the most devoted husband and father and and all of those accusations from gavin they could be lies you don't know that mother there are phone calls that he cannot explain to me he goes out of town on business and every time he does so mysteriously candace rogers seems to disappear too For all your assistants. Um, they're back at the office. You know, oh. I just called Mama, and Holden has not called Lily yet. Oh, listen, if he had been in an accident, I'm sure we would have heard something. By I know, now. I know. I keep trying to tell myself that, but why hasn't he called I'm, Lily? I'm sure he will. Come on, I'll walk you back <gasps> to the office. Oh, hi. hi. How are you doing? I can't find Larry anywhere. Why'd you page him? I did page him. He didn't pick up. Hmm. I had to call Emily and tell her to go to lunch without us. Well, listen, read the riot act to him when you find him. Tell him to shape up. Oh, sure. I'll try. Oh, I tried to reach Sabrina myself. Uh, I wanted to talk to her about going down to that clinic when I get some time off. I got through, but uh, she'd gone to Cartagena for the day. I envy you. I wish I could get down there before vacation. There's this young girl down there, Inez. She's 14. She's pregnant. She has no family, no husband, no anything. I, I really worry about her. Well, I'll, I'll check on it for you when I get there. Thank you. I'd appreciate that. Well, yeah, uh, would you... You want some coffee? No, i better get to the office. See you later. Where have you been? Um, I had some important things to take care of. Like what? Wait, don't move. Inez! Oh. <laughs> hear from you. Hello, Gavin. 
timing just couldn't be worse. Why? Because, because I have a lot of other problems I need to deal with right now. Don't tell me Franny suspects. I'm not sure, but I think she may. Is Vicky in today? Yes, I saw her earlier this morning. Good, good. I, I need to speak with her. What do you need to speak to Vicky for? While I was away, Franny got a phone call from Arthur Claiborne. Daryl, you don't think that he... I don't know what he told her. Vicky's still in touch with him. She'll know or she can find out. You know that she won't tell you the truth. Why do you keep her on here anyway? You know damn well why. All right, well, I will... I'll be by and pick Chris up in just a little while. Thank you. Okay, fine. Bye-bye. She says that uh, Chris is having a really good time playing with Janice. Listen, sweetie. I think you have to go back home. You have to confront Daryl with the letter, with all of these things that you found and in the safe in Carolyn's old bedroom. I mean, you, you have to do that. Mother, I cannot. What if it's all true? Francis, are you afraid of Daryl? My God, honey. I'm scared for Carrie. And Mother, I'm going to make safe, make sure that she is safe before I go. Before you go where? All the lies that Daryl has told me, they all sent around the ski lodge in Switzerland. I've got my passport in my bag. I've got the key to the lodge that I found in the safe. If there is any proof at all to what Gavin wrote in the letter, it's going to be there. I've got to find it. I've got to find it before Daryl has a chance to destroy it, because if he does, nobody will ever know the truth. by Martinez Valero Limited. Jewelry by Monet. Join us tomorrow for As the World Turns.